My name is Gladys Sternberg. I am in the Department of Education. I'm an associate professor there, and I was part of the 2013 Nexon Scholars Group. My name is Kevin O'Connor. I'm also in the Department of Education, Faculty of Teaching and Learning, and I'm a 2013 Nexon Scholar. When I first came to Mount Royal, it was several years ago, and I was really interested in how communities of practice could be used in a teacher education setting. And in particular, having taught one year in the program, the second year I was really interested to know how we could take beginning teachers in their first year, first course, and help them develop a professional identity and feel part of a community of educators. And so I was really interested in knowing what are the kinds of things we could do in our class to, to develop a community of practice. Well, I um, arrived at the, the university three years ago. Um, I was very interested coming from a, another university uh, that there was an institute for the scholarship of teaching and learning within a faculty of teaching and learning. Um, in the field of teacher education, it was a refreshing um, voice and uh, support to, to look at teaching and learning. I didn't know a lot about Solo at the time. Um, in, our, in our field of teacher education, we have an area called self-study, uh, which in some ways um, looks at the scholarship of teaching and learning from a different uh, view. And so we were very interested in, or I was very interested in, in, in finding out more about it. I was supported within our department. Uh, at least two of three, two or three of our faculty members had, had gone through before and were very supportive of us uh, applying for, to be an excellent scholar. And so I met uh, Kindred Spirit who arrived at uh, the university at the same time as, as myself, new faculty members who had similar interests um, and backgrounds. And so um, applied um, and again looking at my background is uh, the whole notion of experiential learning and how to better uh, marry theory and practice for our teacher uh, students, teacher education students. And so uh, applied to the scholarship of teaching and language which I thought would, would fit very well. And also saw it as an opportunity for us as, as scholars in a new university to, to learn. Um, to, we were building a new program at Mount Royal, the education program. And so not only for, for our research interests, but also for our practice. It really truly uh, mirrored that. We're looking at the impact of, of different um, pedagogical innovations to improve this notion, that, which is a traditional problematic in, in our field, of how do we better marry the theory at the university and the practice while our students are out in the schools. We had a unique situation because Kevin and I were teaching the first uh, year course, just us. So we had taught it the year before and in this particular study we were teaching it and we were the only instructors and we wanted, we had kind of been playing around and curious about some things that happened that first year. We really were interested in looking at how we could kind of co-teach a group of students, which was all of our B.Ed. students coming in that year, um, in a way that would help us do a better job of the theory practice that Kevin talked about earlier, and also about that community of practice. Can they feel part of a community in education, knowing that they're in the schools half a day, so they have a community there too? And so we got started kind of thinking that we had a really unique opportunity here with that, that course being shared between mm -hmm. the two of us. Yeah, it, it was a nice opportunity. We saw you know, the, the, the benefits in numerous ways. One for the actual impact of our, our pedagogy, to look at, we specifically were looking at different innovations such as mirroring their journals to some of the theoretical applications that uh, we were applying in the courses at the university but also um, something that had been done in the, in the past in other universities we're hearing as best practice is embedding seminars in schools, in actual elementary uh, schools. So while our students in, the, in this course were out in the schools for about a half a day a week, we sort of, and the, the name of my project was theory and practice and then putting the heart of the practicum as the foundation to, to that process. And so building on seminars and their experience in the schools and trying to allow them to make those connections, facilitate those connections between what they were seeing in their classrooms that day as an aid, as, an, as a, a, a developing teacher, to then the theory that, all, that most of the time is coming from somebody at a university in a, in a sort of segregated area. Now it's happening in the elementary schools. Second component, and Gladys looked at that, is, is the community of practice piece, which is kind of interesting because we were incomers. We were new at the university. So we were very interested in how we would model ourselves as new um, mm -hmm. 
professors, educators at the university to knowing these students who are in their first year at, at Mount Royal as a cohort. And uh, we found some really interesting findings from, from the process where the students are really acknowledged and appreciated that process um, from the very beginning. One of the things that we tried that was quite unique was um, arranging them in small groups within our class. In, and we called that critical friends so that they had a chance every class um, that we taught, we taught a Monday morning, every class that we taught we allowed them time to actually talk with one another on a reading that we had given them the previous week. And so they had a chance to kind of unpack that theory in a, in a course-based kind of setting. And then that week, we would go out with them and hold a seminar in their school setting. And so the critical friend conversation kind of was broadened as we had a, a larger conversation in the field, drawing on and kind of expanding the kind of conversations we'd had in class. So it gave them another kind of opportunity to talk and make sense of the theory that we were trying to introduce them to. But what that really did is that it gave them a community at school, um, at, on campus here, um, in a really kind of efficient way of them getting to know each other really quickly and then putting that in the practice and what I found with looking at that and we kind of shared the, the same kind of impression, once they were in the school they were making those connections so much more richer than what we had experienced the previous year when we didn't do that part. Mm -hmm. And Kevin was more particularly focused on the seminar piece and the connections. Yeah and, and I had come, I had the opportunity at McGill University to look at a, a, a similar process for an extended practicum for third year teacher education program um, where they were in for the semester and they had seminars in the schools and I was involved in that and I saw something there where the students were responding in, in a more engaged fashion. They were making the connections that we just didn't see um, in our courses at the university and so as, as one of the pedagogical interventions of this process that we created um, I was very interested in the impact. Why was this happening? Why were, they so, why were they speaking more professionally? Why were they making the connections? Why were they more engaged, energetic? Why were they looking so forward to having these seminar uh, meetings every week to talk about? And, and um, it built on sort of a passion and background of mine of experiential and place-based education where we know there, there's, there's impact by immersing them in the experience and then having them debrief, reflect upon that. John Dewey's been talking about it for over 100 years. An interesting part, and I say kindred spirit with this fine lady beside me, is we both have a background of place-based education through an Indigenous uh, perspective. And so I was really interested in, in how to marry and, and merge or look at contradictions from a Western perspective of place to an Indigenous perspective. Mm -hmm. And then how did that support this notion of place that we were seeing that really heightened our students' persona, their identity as teachers or you know, developing teachers and also their understanding of the theory as it applied to the classroom. We were really struck by, um, by some of the findings that came out of our research. So we gathered their reports in journal writing, we gathered their portfolio artifacts, we gathered um, some of their artifacts in the seminar, we recorded those. We um, invited them to an exit interview with us, so we had a number of the data points. And what we were really struck by was that so very early in their um, school career, their academic career, they were actually talking like teachers. And that, they're 17, 18, 19 year olds. And this was the first course, first year. And we thought that was really profound. Um, one in particular said, um, while I'm sitting in the seminar, um, I feel like a teacher. I'm going by my Miss so, so and so instead of just my first name. I look and I hear the kids and I respond differently because I'm sitting here. And um, that community of them feeling they were part of the school was really strong. What I was interested in is what happens with the community at the campus and the, com the community that they're developing in that school. Where does that overlap? And that was the fascinating part for us because that tended to happen in that seminar conversation. And that was really um, not anticipated. I thought they would have a lot of that in their journal, and they did, but a lot of that happened in the conversations and unfolding. And that's where it dovetailed really nice with Kevin's work, where he was looking at that play space and that, that theory practice connection, that the communities of practice gave a framework for looking at that overlap. Yeah, and our, our students shared um, some ideas in the sense they talked about sort of being passive recipients of knowledge at the university, mm -hmm. but yet when we were speaking about these theories at the school, in these elementary schools, they were speaking as a teacher. They were professional. They were Mr. or Mrs. Mm -hmm. um, 
classic you know response and I, I know I've used this before and then the Soto keynote but uh, uh, one student talked about well I show up at the university and set sweatpants and my hair is all messy and I sort of sit back and I listen but yet when we're in seminar we're at the school I am Mrs and I'm dressed as a professional teacher and I'm thinking like a professional teacher and I'm responding to the issues the complexities of the classroom with peers with my peers and there was a big piece we, we talk about um, the supports um, the cohorts, the, the development of identity through community. Um, and we're hearing through the seminar process that students really feel supported and see those connections because not only are they sitting and, and speaking amongst themselves as peers where they're talking about it's important to hear that it's not only me going through this or you know what if this happens now I'll know because Jenny went through it and, and I'll, I'll, I'll be more prepared to react to a situation. But they also talked about being facilitated by the teacher educator um, having a framework as supported by the theory of the readings and then another I mean I, at the time we can't guarantee to have all mentor teachers in these discussions but when they did participate be it in the seminar or wanting to know what happened afterwards when they returned to the classroom they saw that as there's a third you know set of insights that they really valued um, and I truly believe because we we did that in the schools as part of those place-based seminars we were able to develop and build on those opportunities one part that was really significant for me is the community that developed for me as a professor mm -hmm. because I was at the school. And we've talked a little bit about how this improves our practice and that was the whole kind of goal of the, of the research project. But it really, really was impactful in the way that we noticed our own practice changing because we were actually in the setting. And so we could see our student teachers in, in there in the classrooms but we also were in the schools and looking at the little kids and and, and developing relationships with the principals and the administrators and the mentor teachers in a very deep and real way. And the conversations we, were had, we had were mirrored by the kind of conversations that mentor teachers were having with their own faculty and their own staff. And so we felt a, a big part of that. And so when I talk about that overlap piece, um, that was significant because in most teacher ed programs, that does not happen. The two are completely separate. And that's where you get that theory and that practice divide. And just to build on that, the relationships we mm -hmm. built with our students was, was yeah. identified in, in the, the interviews, the exit interviews in, in their journals. They talked about by us being involved in, and being involved with them at the university, but also in their school placements. We developed a, a bond, a support, a, a relationship that they, va they valued, um, which I think was quite unexpected at first. Um, we did these exit interviews with our students, and it was amazing to see the response and the, the eagerness to want to share and, to, and, and also the candidness of our students. They weren't um, reserved where you would see possibly it's your student, mm -hmm. we're asking them to, to share their experience, but yet they were pretty frank uh, with us about what worked, what didn't, and, I, I, and they also acknowledged that they felt comfortable sharing that with us, and I think that's a really big piece that we originally going in didn't, didn't identify or foresee. It's always <laughs> interesting to me that when we study our own practice, we are surprised and, and we, it, it's a really interesting thing after so many years of being in teacher education that we can still be learning and surprised mm -hmm. and curious about our own practice and, and wanting to, to improve that. And I think our students also saw that from us. Right. Our students saw us engaged in a project that was about our own professional development and they too were expected to do that. So we were really upfront about participating in our own study in our own investigation and, and, and you know, being from a very authentic, curious place. And I think that made a professional impact on them too. One thing that we've seen following these students now, because this was in 2013, is these students have a very, very strong professional identity. They are willing to take risks. They feel supported. They, ex they use those words to, mm -hmm. to explain you know, their, their, their participation in our program. We're hearing that from um, their mentor teachers and, and other professors that are, that are in that interacting with the uh, student teachers. I think um, one thing that in Alberta, as teacher educators, we've had a blue ribbon panel that, come, that came out to talk about the notion of, of education within the province, talks about the, the, the really large and rising attrition rate of new teachers in the field. And one of the areas is, is developing not only their identity, a strong identity, but also a community of practice mm -hmm. that supports them. And also, and this is a big one, is lifelong learning. So how do these teachers move forward where they're consistently reviewing their practice and improving on it in a, in a scholarship of, of teaching and learning. And like Lada said, 
I, w I still remember when the fr one of the first students in our exit interviews mm -hmm. brought that to us, where they acknowledged, they said, you guys modeled it for us. You showed us and you were honest and there was a humility about, you were learning also. You shared that from the start of introducing the research mm -hmm. to, this is why we've chosen these pedagogical interventions, this is what we're finding, and we adjusted our, uh, along in the semester. And for the students to pick that up and see that and import that into their own practice, I think that was something that um, we felt good about. We mm -hmm. learned a lot from, mm -hmm. and we've continued to, to implement it uh, in, in, in further courses and the development of our program. The other thing that happened that we didn't anticipate, so Kevin and I had our own class and we taught it at the same time, but one thing that we didn't anticipate was that um, the seminar, w which the students were all mixed up, so I had some of Kevin's students in my section, he had my students in his, um, over and over again in the final interviews, the students remarked on the fact that we were consistent and professional and they felt that they knew both of us in a context, so they had a much more richer range of experience with teacher ed in their first year. And being kind of in that context, we hadn't realized how much they were watching us as how we team taught and co-planned and wanted experiences for our students that were in similar in nature. And they picked up on that, which we hadn't anticipated. It was kind of exciting. That's right. And it forced us to, to stay on the same yes, page. Yes, it did. <laughs> so, which is great, which is a good thing, for sure. We used, I mean, this, it was profoundly impacting for us. Um, we used that, that as a pilot to apply for a SHIRT grant. We are now following, which we did get. Um, it's one of the largest ones that Mount Royal has ever had. They funded us for the full amount that we asked for, which is unheard of. Um, so all of those things came out of this curiosity that we had. Ranked fourth in the country. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it was profoundly Im impacting in our own practice, but also now we can look at what we've learned and, and develop it and follow these students through another five years. So it's really exciting for us to, s to see if we can design our, our program around the theory practice, the seminar integration, the communities of practice, um, all of these things that contribute to a profound sense of identity and professionalism. And, and knowing that it's lifelong learning and being scholarly in their work, contributing to the scholarship that we have in teaching and learning. And I think that's really powerful. Um, for me, it has been just a magnificent way of looking at what one small project can do mm. in, in opening up your own mind as a researcher and as an instructor and saying, wow, these are such exciting things. I want to keep going. I want to try learning. I, I, these are things I hadn't anticipated. And, and it's really profoundly um, important and significant in the work that we do here. Yeah, and in many ways, SOTO really jump-started mm -hmm. opportunities for us. Um, we were able to collaborate. We, we, we hadn't met each other before, and we had two pro projects that, that mirrored um, and looked at similar, um, similar areas within teacher education, but also based on the, on the courses we were teaching mm -hmm. together. Um, if we look at research, um, both moved into an IRG, so an mm -hmm. internal research grant at Mount Royal. The SOTO led us to that. So that was sort of then following upon that semester with these first years, we looked at our, were they in third year at the time? Our third year students, based again on communities of practice, place-based seminars, but as third years and what they were doing in their program. Um, the SHIRK was fascinating um, in the sense that we are now able to follow these students and really be able to to walk the talk in the sense if, if this is important, if we see that, well how is it going to play out when they're actually in their own classrooms when they've got jobs? And so we've got an opportunity now, two years essentially, um, moving forward after they graduate where we look at these students and how are they, how the resiliency, the grit, the ability to collaborate in their schools, um, building communities of practice, building on certain pedagogical practices that we know are important. So that's going to be fascinating, we have a great opportunity to do so. Um, new academic, someone who's, who's looking for tenure, um, other than riding the coattails of, of oh. my partner here. Um, you know, it just opened up uh, a whole range of publications, opportunities to speak. We were invited to have a keynote within the Sotol Symposium um, within the university. Uh, it's just been, it's been a wild ride. And I would recommend any new academic um, to, to take advantage of that. Um, Personally, you know, moving from the teacher ed program, coming from a self-study background to a SOTL and, and really mm -hmm. just uh, learning and, and, and embracing what it had to offer, I, I think SOTL is 
has so much within cross-disciplinary, multidisciplinary approaches because we're no longer just talking amongst teacher educators. We're talking about education, but we're talking for people from different faculties and different interests and, and disciplines. And I think that's fascinating and we've learned tremendously mm -hmm. um, from our, our time with different solo conferences to the 2013 Nexon to meeting other Nexon uh, scholars along the way. One of the reasons I came to Mount Royal, I came from the University of Alberta and um, a strong research agenda there and strong research uh, protocols and the Institute of Scholar Scholarship of Teaching and Learning was the carrot. It was the absolute carrot for me to come here because we're one of the few institutions that do that. And it's significant that we have a post-secondary institute that focuses on teaching and learning. Um, I think that's, that's the most profound um, opportunity that we've had coming here. I echo that 100%. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll add just, it was, um, it was really nice within SOTL and the mm -hmm. Nexen cohort to get to know, especially new scholars mm -hmm. um, coming to Mount Royal, is we were now put in a community of practice um, with people from other parts of the university with their own research interests, and we got to meet. We got time away from the university to discuss, and this is really important. You know, we, we take, it, take for granted sometimes that, you know, pulling away from the university has an impact on our work, but really being able to meet a group of people so many times a year at the university, but then out also outside the university in a retreat-like setting was, was huge. You know, we're talking about what we're finding. Yeah. We're seeing the similarities, the discrepancies, um, coming from different disciplines and, 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 and focuses. It was, it's a wonderful model, it really is. And I have not seen that as either professional development support for research or writing that uh, the Institute supports. So thank you very much.